time and uh, get all of the great content in. So welcome to the third and final webinar in our March Media Madness Technology Tuesdays online series featuring Daniel Jones. Uh, this afternoon is for music lovers, and so I'm really excited uh, to hear what Daniel has to say. If you are returning from our second webinar or the first and been here for the whole series, we thank you. We really appreciate all of the participation we've had uh, for this series. And if you're new, I'm happy to have you join us for this third and final uh, episode of the series. Uh, I am Jennifer Lisinski, Vice President of Marketing for St. John's, and I'm serving as the host again today, um, manning the controls and getting everybody uh, up and running so they can enjoy the webinar. So for those of you who are returning, again, much of this intro will be reviewed, but I want to remind everyone of a few logistical items before we move on to today's webinar. Session attendees uh, have been muted upon entry. This is um, for everyone's enjoyment. Um, please stay muted to ensure the best experience for everyone. If you have questions during the session, we want to hear uh, them. We want to hear your comments. Please type them into the chat where they can be compiled uh, by me during the presentation and we'll review them during the Q&A portion. Uh, we definitely want to hear from folks and as the questions come to you, please just put them in the chat or you'll be able to ask them uh, at the end as well. Uh, there will be a separate Q&A portion at the end um, after Daniel's formal presentation, during which time uh, uh, you can all ask as many questions as you want and Daniel's been really generous with his time so uh, we want to hear from you. If you're having any problems connecting during the session uh, please use the chat functionality to contact me and as possible I will try to solve the problems and make sure you have a great experience. Uh, as I shared last week, sessions like this are just an example of the types of offerings we provide to our residents um, once they become part of St. John's. And there's always something to do and learn at our communities and educational, music, uh, exercise, you name it. Um, it's a really active place uh, here at St. John's. So I encourage you to check out our website at stjohnsliving.org, which is a great resource of information about all of the amenities we have to offer and the benefits of living in an independent living community like ours. Um, so tours are also a great way to experience us and we hope that you might take advantage of that if you haven't done so uh, already. We're open for in-person or virtual tours and we'd love to host you. We also have a special promotion running right now that's only actually good for one more day, but you can still take advantage of it. Um, Cindy, Stephanie, and Don want to hear from you, and uh, they we advertise the promotion in the pre-slides. So if you want more information about that, um, don't hesitate to contact us. And uh, Stephanie, Don, and Cindy's contact information will also be put up at the end of the presentation so you can get a hold of them. Now, allow me to introduce our main speaker for this afternoon, and uh, you're going to learn a lot uh, from Daniel. He is an independent instructor providing older adults with computer, internet, social networking skills to enhance their lives and keep them connected. Uh, Daniel Jones's computer courses and seminars break down the barriers of fear and intimidation often associated with learning new technology, and he provides seniors with a greater understanding of the options and the tools available uh, through patient, fun, and easy to learn Approach, which you, those of you who have been part of our series have already gotten to witness. Daniel provides both private in-home one-to-one -one lessons as well as group instruction in a variety of communities and libraries in the Rochester and upstate area. He's been teaching uh, so long and uh, for so many people, he's up to 5,808 people to date. Uh, and in 2010, Daniel received his certificate in gerontology through St. John Fisher College and is a certified Eden Alternative Associate. And in July of 2020, Daniel celebrated nine years in the business. So uh, it's going to be a great afternoon. Uh, he has a lot to share, and we thank you for spending time with us uh, today. And uh, we hope that you'll come to future sessions that we have to offer and enjoy the workshop. So with just a little magic here, we're gonna get Daniel up and running and uh, make sure that he can share a screen and uh, turn it over to him. So let me do that, unmute and uh, be ready to go. So enjoy. Okay. Thanks so much for having me again today. Um, and just a little tidbit for Jennifer, my numbers are now up with this group, I'm now up over 6,000 people uh, in teaching. So thanks for the introduction. So let's get right into it. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. 
and we will get right into it here. Okay, so today we are going to talk digital music mania. We're going to talk everything digital music today. Uh, just the agenda here. I'm going to skip introductions since Jennifer already did that. I'm going to talk about the, give you a little bit of history here to talk about what I call the digital music revolution, um, how that came about, and how that completely disrupted the music industry. I'm going to talk about uh, Apple, specifically Apple iTunes and the iPod, and again, how Apple, uh, the company Apple, completely revolutionized so much in technology, but especially when it comes to the music industry and how we purchase and listen to music. I'll share with you um, demos on how to purchase and download music onto your devices. And then I'm gonna spend quite a bit of time talking about um, internet radio and different music streaming services out there. And also give it, get, uh, I'll also get you uh, some tips on accessories and things that you might want to use when it comes to listening to music. So let's talk a little bit about the revolution of digital music and how this came about. We, all listen to music on albums or 45s or eight tracks, cassette tapes. Um, I'm, I'm gonna be 55 years old, so I'm right there with you. I grew up with all these different uh, formats and listening to music. And these formats, except for albums, actually albums are making quite a big, quite a big comeback right now. Um, but these are kind of the traditional ways that we used to listen to music. And we would listen to them on a record player or on a boom box. And then Sony came around and invented the Sony Walkman. And the Sony Walkman was really, really different and really rev revolutionized how we listen to music when that came about. Because it's really the first time uh, that we could take custom music with us wherever we went. Um, we could listen to mixed tapes and um, we could travel with it much, much easier. Then came digital music and the CD player and CDs. And then that was really disrupted by the MP3 file, which is a digital file. And we listened to that MP3 file through the Apple iPod. And this, along with iTunes, completely changed the music industry starting in 2001. It changed it in terms of how we listen to music, how we purchase music, how we store music, how we share music. So in 2001, this, this is what the iPod looked like. You may all have had one, I know I did. And if we look at today's iPod, it's, what's referred to as the iPod Touch. And it looks very much like an iPhone. If you uh, have an iPhone, this does everything an iPhone does, but make phone calls. So if we jump uh, 10 years, which is a pretty short period of time, I'm sorry, 20 years, it's a pretty short period of time, um, the format of listening to files and listening to music hasn't really changed. Um, the iPod Touch um, allowed us to listen to music, but it also allowed us to take that music with us, to take pictures, to take video, and we basically carried around a portable computer with us. So all of these things happened with the iPod and the iPod Touch, plus built-in GPS and a music store and weather apps and photo albums and tip calculators and remote controls and bartender guides and grocery lists and a stopwatch and stock quotes and a medicine, medication reminder, a travel agent, all these things we can do now in the palm of our hand. And Apple was that company who provided that technology to us. 
which leads into what makes the iPod, the iPod, or the, uh, the iPad, the iPhone, and all different smart devices. If you have an Android phone or an Android tablet, you are using apps. If you don't have one of these devices, you may not know exactly what an app is. So let's define specifically what an app is. The most popular definition of an app is software. Simply, the term app is just short for software application. And apps are typically run and most commonly run on iPhones, iPods, iPads, Android, um, all the different smart devices that are out there. And you can purchase an app using the App Store if you're on an Apple device. If you're on an Android device, you would purchase and download apps from the Google Play Store. So these in themselves are apps. An app is software. And software allows us to do a number of different things depending on what that particular software does. So I'm gonna share this, uh, this video with you. It talks a little bit more about apps and how they started and how we use them. The chances are you've been using apps for years. Your home or work computer has apps like a spreadsheet program, calculator, or photo editor. Recently, these apps or applications evolved in a big way. Let's start with platforms. You know, a place to put things. A table, in a basic sense, is a platform. You plug in some plates, cups, and flatware, and it turns into a great place to eat. Computers work the same way. They create platforms for software applications. A spreadsheet and an accounting app can turn a computer into a business tool. Music and video apps can make a computer a studio. For most of their history, apps have seemed big and expensive. We often bought them at a store and loaded them onto a computer with a disk. And most of these apps didn't connect to the internet. Recently, platforms changed in big ways. Our mobile phones and tablets became useful platforms just like our computers, and this enabled a different kind of app. Instead of big, expensive programs, many apps became smaller and cheaper. Instead of coming in a box or taking hours to download, they could be purchased or downloaded for free from the internet with a click, even on the go. This made apps collectible. For little investment, we could collect apps on our devices that reflect our needs and interests. One person's collection may focus on gaming, another business, or both. Now, apps may wake you up in the morning, give you a snapshot of the news, play the music you like, help you get to the airport, check you in, and help you read your new book all from the palm of your hand. To support all these new apps, we need online marketplaces that make them easy to purchase and download. This way, small teams and large organizations have a way to market, give away, or sell thousands of new apps. And these new apps have another advantage. Many are built to work with the internet. This means they can back up your work, play your music, or connect you with friends wherever you are without opening a web browser. But it's not just phones and tablets. Computers, browsers, social networks, and gaming systems have all become platforms for a new generation of apps. So apps aren't really new. What have changed are platforms and marketplaces that make them easy to purchase and collect for whatever you need to do. And that's the important thing I, I would say about apps is that it, it does allow you to customize your device to how you want it. And at last count, uh, there are over 1 billion apps available in the Apple, uh, in the Apple Store. So when we talk about Apple, when we talk about the iPod, <clears throat> and we talk about the music industry, we need to talk about iTunes iTunes, when it came out, was a media player, a media library, and an online store that you could collect, manage, purchase music on your computer, whether it's a desktop computer or a laptop or a tablet. 
iTunes was used to play, download, download, and organize digital audio and video on your personal computer. So think of iTunes as kind of a traditional music store. The, the, the concept is the same. Okay, so unfortunately, there are very few record stores anymore. But think about it. You go into a record store. You go around the record store, you check out, you thumb through some albums, you pick out a handful of albums, you go up to the counter and you make your purchase. You go home to your turntable and play your music. The concept is exactly the same. The difference is instead of a physical store and physically leaving your home, you're doing this all on your computer. So iTunes, especially when it came out in the beginning, um, was a, a great software in order to organize all the different music that you had. And it also allowed you to um, what's, uh, what's re referred to as rip and burn, where you can, if you had, it up, if you had your own music, let's say you had your own collection of CDs at the time, you could pop your CD into your computer and you could rip the music off of that CD. You could basically take those files that's on that CD and you could add them to your collection. So you didn't need to purchase necessarily new music. So a perfect example that I'll give you is, is my own example. Um, when iTunes first came out, I held on to all my CDs. I held on to all my albums because I didn't really know anything about this. And then I quickly learned that this is not going away. And for somebody like me who has a gigantic music collection, it was a great way to organize my library. So I, at the time, I had 385 CDs in my uh, record collection or my music collection. So what I did one by one is I would pop my CD into my computer and I would rip those um, songs off my CD and add it to my iTunes library. And with iTunes, it also not only not only did it store your music that you already owned that you could rip, but also you could purchase and download music as well through the iTunes store. So the iTunes store is pretty much um, a, is, a, is or was, I'll say was, because it technically doesn't exist anymore, but uh, was an online music store. And with that, it allowed you to take your music with you. So once you downloaded it onto your computer, and as long as your computer and your iPad and your iPhone are all linked to your one account, you can, sh you can, share that music among those different devices. So here's an example of kind of a, a classic example of how music is purchased now and how you can listen to it. So with iTunes or any really online music store, you access that store, which is on the internet, you download that music, so in this case, the Beatles' Abbey Road. I can buy that music. And then in this case, Apple and iCloud stores that music for you and then pushes that music down to any device that you own. So you have the ability to listen to your music on any device. And I've had people say to me, well, I, I don't want to listen to music on my computer because I don't have good speakers or you know, why would I want to listen to my music on my computer? I want to listen to it on my stereo. Well, you can connect your computer to your main stereo. So for example, in my case, my, I'm upstairs here in my, in my office. My computer is up here in my office, but my main stereo with the nice speakers and everything is downstairs. I can connect them remotely through Wi-Fi. Try again. Oh, sorry. I active, accidentally activated Siri there. Okay. 
So, Daniel, I heard Apple got rid of iTunes. Is that true? It is true. Sort of. What Apple did is they broke iTunes into really two platforms for music. There is Apple Music, and then there's the Apple iTunes Store. So after 18 years, Apple decided to end the groundbreaking iTunes platform in June of 2019. So this is it's fairly new. And it replaced the, um, it, was, it was replaced by Apple Music and the iTunes Store. So Apple Music is what's referred to as a subscription-based music streaming service that allows you to listen to over 60 million songs. Features include the ability to download your favorite tracks and play them offline. You have access to lyrics in real time. So when you're listening to a song, you can actually read the lyrics. Um, and you can listen across your favorite device. The iTunes Store is an app that is really what I call a one-stop media shop for your iPhone, for your iPod, for your iPad, and even your iMac. With the iTunes Store, you can find and purchase music, movies, TV shows, audiobooks, podcasts, and more. You can organize and play your music and video. And you can play or download unlimited songs with the Apple Music service if you were to go that route. So the traditional iTunes uh, player and media library has basically been switched. But Daniel, does that mean I lose all my music I previously purchased with iTunes? If you currently use iTunes or have purchased songs in the past with iTunes, you don't lose any of your music. Every song you've ever purchased will already be part of your Apple Music account. All the files that are already on your computer, your iPhone, your iPad will remain. Apple isn't liquidating anything that you already own, but it will reorganize where the files live. So let me give you an example here. Um, I am talking to you on my iMac, <coughs> which is a desktop Apple computer. Um, I have an older version of the software, and I can still manage my, my Apple um, music through my computer. But if I were to buy a brand new computer, a brand new Apple computer, I wouldn't be able to do that anymore. Everything is done through these two new apps, the iTunes uh, Store and the Apple Music app. So let me give you a little bit of a demo of what I'm talking about here. So let me switch devices. Okay, so you should all see my Apple or my iPad screen. Excuse me, I have to cough. <coughs> so I'm connected to my iPad. So let me go to, first, let me go to the iTunes store. So again, this app, the iTunes store and the, where's my music app? And my music app, those come built in to your Apple device. So if I wanna look up music on my iPad, I wanna purchase and so on, I can go to the iTunes store with a tap. Let me switch mouses here. Okay, so let me go to iTunes. And it looks very similar to kind of the older iTunes uh, store, but what we're basically looking at is what I call is kind of the storefront of Apple Music and the iTunes store. So I can, let me just 
hold on one second. Let me just make this screen a little smaller here. There we go. Okay. So I can just basically browse through and I can just basically scroll down. And all I'm doing right now is kind of window shopping in the iTunes store. I can see what albums are they're currently promoting. So they give me a list of the, the kind of the new music that's out there. And again, a lot of this is, a lot of this is based on my, my personal preference. So the things that will come up are based on what I listen to or have listened to. I can scroll down and I can see I can purchase some songs for as low as 69 cents a piece. Most songs are $1.29, so I can buy an individual song if I want, or I can buy an entire album. And you'll also notice that along the bottom here, I'm currently in the music section because that's highlighted in blue, but there's a movie section, TV show section, uh, a top of the charts, which kind of shows me the, uh, the latest and greatest that are out there genius uh which i never use and then also it gives me a record of the the songs i've um that i've purchased in the past so i'm currently in the music section so if i don't feel like browsing i can go right up to the top here in the search bar and i can click there and i can type in the artist that i want to look for so in this case i'm going to type in elvis presley So I type in Elvis Presley, I tap on Elvis Presley, and it's going to bring up every single item in the, whoa, oh my gosh, you got to be kidding me. The iTunes store is temporarily unavailable. Try later. That is not good. Let's, uh, let's try it again. Let's clear it out. Let me type in Rod Stewart. Okay. Well, for some reason, I guess it didn't like Elvis Presley. <laughs> so I type in Rod Stewart. And when I type in Rod Stewart, it brings up every single thing about Rod Stewart that's available in the Apple kind of universe. So I have individual songs i have albums and again i can kind of just scroll through and see what they've got they've got books so these would be uh, books that i can either read on my device or audio books that i can listen to oh here you go here's audio books music videos I can even get ringtone. So if there's a favorite Rod Stewart song, I can make that my ringtone on my phone. Movies, podcast, everything, everything Rod Stewart. So I say, okay, I want to look for a particular album. So I'm going to kind of scroll through here and I'm going to tap on this album here. Every picture tells a story. I can tap on it and it's going to bring up that album. And from here, I can purchase individual songs or I can purchase the entire album. Oh, my mouse is acting funny here. I can purchase the entire album for $8.99. Again, I can scroll through. I can also, if I wanna hear just a taste of a certain song, I can, tap on it and it will play me let's say i'm interested in a movie i want to purchase a movie and watch it on my device i can go down to movies tap on it and now i'm in the movie section of the itunes store and again i can just scroll to see what they're currently promoting If there's a particular movie that I'm interested in, again, I can go up to search in the upper right corner. I can type in 
John Wayne. So you can search by actor, by director, by film title, whatever it might be. And in this case, it brings up every John Wayne movie. <laughs> every John Wayne, there's even a few songs called John Wayne. Interesting. So everything related to John Wayne comes up. So iTunes started out originally as a music store, and then it became a multimedia store where you can, again, purchase just about any type of medium that you want for that device. So let's pretend that I downloaded some music, or I should say I purchased some music through the iTunes store. When I purchased that music, that music is then stored and played through my Apple Music app. So the iTunes store is where I purchase it, and the music app is where I listen to it. So I tap on my music app. It's going to try to sell me. It always tries to sell me to join. Apple Music subscription, which I'm not going to do, but I will talk about subscription services later. And what I can do is I can browse different songs, but if I want to go right to my library and I want to see what artists and albums I've purchased, I can go tap right on artists and it'll bring up every artist that I have in my music, Apple Music app. So I can search by artist, I can search by album, song, genre, and so on. So let's say John Denver. I want to listen to John Denver. I've already purchased the song or the album. I tap on it. I hit play right down here. Oh, maybe it's not going to play. Is it not going to play for me? Oh, you know what? It may not play because I'm connected to the internet uh, with you, and it recognizes that I'm actually connected to my computer, um, and I'm teaching, so it probably is, is uh, being copyrighted, copyright protected. Let me tap, tap another one. Let me tap the Mills Brothers. Let me hit that one. Okay, I can hear it, but you can't hear it. So trust me. <laughs> so to recap, if you are on an Apple device and you wanna stay within the Apple kind of um, family, you can purchase, search for music and so on in the iTunes store. And then that music gets played in your Apple Music app. And that's if you want to purchase the music. You actually want to own the music. There are other forms. So let me move on and let me get back to the next part, which is really, I would say, the most popular part and where the industry uh, definitely is and is going to stay for the meantime. And that is music streaming. So what I just shared with you is kind of the history of Apple, the history of digital music, and how you can actually purchase and own the music if you want to own it. If you want to stream music, there are lots of different services out there. But before we talk about music streaming, I want to talk about the word streaming. What does that mean? It's probably one of the most uh, asked questions I get. Streaming means listening to music or watching a video in real time over the internet instead of downloading a file to your computer and watching or listening to that file later. 
If you attended uh, the TV Today seminar, I talked about streaming. Um, with internet music or video, there is no file to download, just a continuous stream of data. So what does that mean? Instead of using iTunes to purchase and download the file physically on my device and store it there, I can stream music, but I must be connected. And think of streaming music, think of streaming music and, and video kind of like uh, a creek or a river. It's a constant flow of data instead of a constant flow of water. So in order to stream music, you have to be connected to the internet. It has to be a continuous connection. And the speed and the strength of your internet connection and the processor in your device all come into play when it comes to streaming music. If I don't have a very strong internet connection on my uh, iPad, the, the music's gonna stop and start and pause, okay? That's called buffering. Um, so you wanna make sure you've got a strong connection, a strong processor. So streaming music, constant stream of, uh, of audio, audio files from the company's computers to your device. There are tons and tons of internet, radio and music streaming services out there. You may use some of these and you've probably heard of many of these. Uh, this is kind of an interesting chart because uh, by far, without a doubt, the most popular and the biggest streaming service right now is Spotify, without a doubt. So this kind of just shows you, this gives you uh, light blue is 2019 and dark blue is 2020. So if we're looking at Spotify right here, it's jumped 10% in the year in terms of its users. And these other areas, uh, app, you know, Amazon Music is also climbing and so on, but you've got a lot of these smaller players as well. And you can see where iTunes and Apple Music is. Um, they don't have such a big share like they used to. Apple dominated, completely dominated the music industry and the music buying experience for years. That's all kind of changing. So the competition is fierce. So I am a big fan of CNET. I believe I talked about this uh, during the TV uh, seminar. CNET is an excellent website for all things um, technology, I would say, for review. So if you're looking to buy a new device, um, I would go to CNET to read reviews. If you're looking at different services and so on, I would check out CNET to see what they recommend. So I'm gonna share with you the best uh, music streaming services for this year. And we've kind of narrowed it down to this main list. So in this, this uh, first column here is Apple Music. I'm sorry, Amazon Music, Apple Music, YouTube Music, Pandora, Spotify, and Tidal. So let's just kind of take a real quick look at the cost and so on, all right? So Amazon Music, it's $7.99. There are ads that you have to listen to. They do have a, a free 30-day trial and their music library consists of over 60 million songs. And the quality is, the quality is good in terms of the quality of the sound. Apple Music is more expensive. It's $10 a month. They have a three month trial. Uh, that is pretty rare for a, having a three month trial. If you sign up for Apple Music for three months, that's awesome. But keep in mind, they will take your credit card when you sign up for those th first three months. So after three months, they will start to bill your credit card unless you cancel it. So that's a little tricky. 
Uh, also 60 million song library, the quality is good. YouTube music, I would say is probably the, one of the newer players. Um, they have ads, 30 day free trial. Pandora, Pandora is very popular. Um, but the clear winner is definitely Spotify. Um, and I think the big reason is they actually have uh, their free option is really, really good. Um, and there's no limit to, um, you know, uh, the music that you can listen to. There are definitely limits to how you can listen to music. But the quality, too, that's another thing that's important, is the quality of the, um, this is called the kilobytes per second, uh, which basically means the higher this number, the better quality sound. You can also listen to uh, Spotify and really all of these devices. Well, actually, except Apple Music is only mobile. So Amazon Music, Spotify, you can listen on your desktop, laptop, mobile device, and so on. Oh, hold on. Sorry. Let me uh, share a video with you on Spotify and how it really became to dominate the market. And it's a good history lesson too. The internet has changed so many aspects of media consumption, but few have had a more tumultuous relationship with these changes than the music industry. I mean, I don't believe we're talking about streaming music if it's not for Napster and Sean and everything that they did. CDs became the standard medium in the 1990s. At the same time, home computers were becoming more commonplace, many with disk drives built in, allowing users to take their favorite CDs and rip them onto their devices as MP3 files. This made way for peer-to-peer -peer music sharing or music piracy through platforms like Napster and LimeWire. If you look at Napster and of course other competitors that followed, it, it really disenfranchised the industry. Apple, having had great success with iTunes and the iPod, decided to start selling music digitally on iTunes in 2003 as a way to charge into the music industry and combat music piracy. It's not stealing anymore, it's good karma. iTunes was the first legal attempt of saying like, okay, what Napster is doing is piracy and it is the wild, wild west. How can we start to look at digital downloads? Would people pay 99 cents for a song to be able to have access to it? And it succeeded. It was all about downloads. This was all about iTunes. iTunes was the driving force. It in turn destroyed other music selling businesses, knocking out Tower Records and almost every other music store. This was a tough pill to swallow for the music industry as a whole. During the 90s, the money was still flowing. The advances I would get, they would spend a million dollars on it, on the promotion of my singles, me, like, like someone who doesn't even write mainstream stuff. Then the internet put a stop to that. The industry was so used to big margins, trying to sell a CD for 20 bucks, and it only cost $1 to manufacture. So the margins were huge. And then to go from that to, okay, now full albums are $9.99 on iTunes, those margins started to deplete. And for music lovers who wanted their music for free, radio was still a resource they cherished. Online radio company Pandora claimed some of that market when it launched in 2000. And 10 years later, it had 48 million subscribers. I remember when everyone I know was trying to tweak their Pandora stations. I had it on my phone all the time, was like, oh, like this station becomes this, and it was cool. But pirating was still an issue. A 2007 study concluded that $12.5 billion in total output was lost in the U.S. annually because of music piracy. And radio was great, but users wanted to choose their music. That left the market open for a small Swedish company to make its way in. We want music to be like water everywhere. Spotify was founded in 2006 and made its way to the U.S. in 2011. It started with an invite-only beta program for the free tier and quickly garnered favorable reviews. But it faced an uphill battle to the top. It was getting the rights. It was convincing subscribers to get onto the platform. 
these were extremely difficult times for Spotify to make sure that they were able to nab the content, especially at that time. One reason for the company's delayed entry into the U.S. market was because of music rights. It's a complicated business that cost Spotify $9.8 billion between its launch and 2018. They made a risky bet at the time. They're like, well, we know we're going to lose money, but that's what we're going to need to do if our investors support it for music rights, given the price, given content. Once we acquire that content, it's the carrot and the stick approach in terms of subscribers would come. Clearly, the company was onto something and that piqued the curiosity of some major brands. Now it seems every major tech player has its own music streaming platform. Apple dropped iTunes and created Apple Music. Amazon created Amazon Music. Google created Google Play Music and then YouTube Music. Jay-Z even formed his own service called Tidal, which focused on professional sound quality. But Spotify kept its spot at the top thanks to its freemium model, where users can listen for free with ads or pay for a subscription without ads. We believe in a true free service. We believe in something where the user knows that they can go back month and month and month month again and have access to their music. By the end of 2019, Apple Music had 60 million paid subscribers worldwide. Amazon Music had 55 million subscribers worldwide, nearly all of which were paying subscribers. Chinese company Tencent had 39.9 million paying subscribers, while Spotify had 124 million paying subscribers. It was about free going to premium. Conversion was key. And, and I think Spotify was really the one that started that. Platforms like Apple Music are more exclusionary, forcing customers to pay after their free trial is up. Apple even tried to kill Spotify's free version back when Apple Music launched. Free just makes sense for customers, which is a major reason why Spotify is so popular today. But free isn't so great for musicians. The ad dollars are actually less than the, the premium uh, subscriptions. But Apple Music, Tidal, those platforms, get your free trial, but you have to pay. So it's a hard pill to swallow when you're looking at your statement saying, dang, Apple Music, should I focus my energy on Apple Music because this is where the money is? Or do I still go with Spotify because that's where the users are? As Spotify gained popularity, artists started to wonder why they weren't seeing the financial gains they were used to with CD sales and downloads. Taylor Swift boycotted Spotify in 2014, pulling all of her music off the service and saying she and other artists weren't being paid enough for each stream. Adele followed suit in 2015, announcing her album 25 would not be released on Spotify or Apple Music. The term windowing became popular, where artists would only release an album on a certain platform or would not stream an album at all for a certain amount of time. So a lot of artists would window the records where it wasn't on Spotify, say for a certain period of time, but, every, or, but on Apple Music. Kanye West was known for this with uh, Tidal. Taylor Swift and Adele both released their albums on Spotify eventually, but it opened streaming services up to questions about how much they were paying their artists per stream. Spotify and Apple both don't release exactly how much they pay distributors per stream, but it has been reported that Spotify pays around 70% of the revenue made on a stream. I mean, people listen to my music on Spotify. That makes me happy. Now, I know that people aren't getting paid for that, and that makes me sad. But I think that that's a systemic, technological, capitalistic, human issue and you have to go back 300 years and look at how a musician was making their living for their intellectual property in 1901. In 2019, Spotify announced it was moving its music focus to a more general audio focus to broaden its offerings and widen its global lead on competitors. It acquired the Joe Rogan experience early in 2020 and penned exclusive podcast deals with Kim Kardashian and DC Comics. The company's stock jumped 8% at the announcement of the Joe Rogan acquisition alone. A year ago when I was on this show last time, um, I introduced the shift in our strategy from music to audio. At that time, uh, we were a very small player in audio, uh, but growing fast. Now we're the number one player in more than 20 markets around the world uh, and quickly catching up in the markets where we're not number one. That's where Spotify is taking the future right now, and analysts believe it can ride that wave for a bit. 90% of our monetization is on the subscription side, 
but 10% is on the ad side. And we do think that there's real growth opportunity for us in the ad space, particularly with podcasts. Just after these podcast deals were penned, the global pandemic started taking its toll on the economy. But Spotify was one of the few companies that weathered the storm. In fact, Spotify's stock increased 70% from the beginning of January 2020 to the end of June 2020. They benefited from COVID because the lockdowns forced people to stop listening to radio and they discovered Spotify while stuck at home. Of course, yes, if you're Spotify, you'd much rather make money from the podcast acquisitions and that than having to pay 60 to 70 cents for every dollar to Universal or Sony. But in order to stay at the top, Spotify is going to have to stay nimble and quick. Competitors like Tencent are already adding features like karaoke to their streaming music platforms. Tencent at least is on that path from a gamification perspective. So I do think that that is an opportunity for Spotify to keep in mind, like, yes, it's great that you got Joe Rogan, it's great that you got Bill Simmons, but look at those opportunities as well. And even though it's a different market, I think there's a big opportunity there. Nevertheless, Spotify is still very much a success story. Today, they're sitting there drinking their cappuccino laughing as they, you know, see the success. Okay, so just a, a couple of things I want to kind of pull away from there and define a little bit more clearly. So pr prior to Spotify, we'll say, and prior to kind of streaming music as opposed to downloading and purchasing music, the, 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 the model a few years ago was, I, I bought the music, I own the music, and I listen to the music on my devices. Very similar to when you went to the record store. And artists could, could make money by every download. They would get a certain amount of money for every download. Well, people aren't downloading music anymore. They're not owning music anymore. They're streaming music. And that allows, the, that allows you to listen to pretty much any music that you want to listen to without having to own it because you can take it with you everywhere you go. So instead of the artists getting paid per download, they now are getting paid per stream. How many times am I listening to that song? How many times am I streaming that song? Lastly, um, they talk about uh, how Spotify and others are are going beyond music and now go and going into audio. What does that mean? That means podcasts. That means audio books. That means anything that you can listen to, they want to be a part of. Um, I'm not going to go into podcasts. I actually have a whole separate seminar on podcasts. Okay. So let's do a Spotify demo. So I'm going to go back to my iPad here. Okay, so I'm back on my iPad. Again, you don't have to have an iPad. You don't have to have an iPhone. Okay, you can join Spotify on your computer if you want. Okay, um, you can go to Spotify.com and sign up for an account. So let's talk a little bit about uh, Spotify. So Spotify, I first started using Spotify probably a year and a half ago. Up until then, I was very much listening and using my iTunes library because I had thousands and thousands of songs in my library. And I owned that music. Well, um, I don't need that anymore, which is kind of sad, but kind of cool in the sense that now I have a greater, I have a massive library. So instead of my 120,000 songs in my collection, I now have 60 million songs in my collection. Not that I'm going to listen to 60 million songs, but. So let's open up the Spotify app. When I first joined Spotify, I got the free account and I signed up for free and the free account is great. Um, what's how that basically works is 
you open up a Spotify account. You've got to give them your email address. You've got to create a password. And then when you join Spotify, Spotify will ask you some questions. What type of music do you like? What artists do you like? And they do that so they can start to build your kind of profile in your library so that you get the, the, the music that you're interested kind of sent to you or suggested to you. Um, the free version is great. Uh, there's a couple of downsides. One is you have to listen to ads, uh, which isn't too bad. Um, uh, but the thing that I find I found kind of the most difficult was, let's say I wanted to listen to Bob Dylan and I wanted to listen to a, an entire Bob Dylan album, specific one. With the free account, it doesn't allow me to do that. I can't necessarily listen to what I want to listen to when I want to listen to it. I can listen to Bob Dylan, but I can't listen to that entire album like I want to with the free version. The paid for version, I pay uh, $10 a month and I have unlimited access to every single song that Spotify offers. So I'm in my Spotify app and right now I'm currently in my home section. And it shows me, it kind of gives me a list of what I've recently played. So I can kind of just kind of go through and say, uh, these are the albums and these are the artists that I've just recently listened to. Again, as I mentioned earlier, um, Spotify is now getting, has gotten into podcasts and audio, what they're calling audio storytelling. Um, so there's different personalities, different celebrities that are doing podcasts. And then what's really, what I really, really like about Spotify is based on the music that I listen to, Spotify will create a, a, a customized playlist for me, and they call them um, daily mixes. So it says right here, made for Dano. That's me. There's daily mix two, daily mix three, and so on. So if I tap on daily mix three, it gives me a list of songs that chances are I'm going to like based on what I've listened to in the past. And what I really like about these daily mixes and the suggestions that Spotify gives me is that I discover new songs. I discover new artists. Okay. So let me click on this one here, Daily Mix 2. When I tap on that, okay, speaking of Bob Dylan, there's a Bob Dylan. So if I, I can tap on that song right now and right down here, so I can pause and play the song. I can fast forward the song. I can rewind the song. And based on this daily mix, there's a Bob Dylan song, but then there's other music from artists I've never heard of. Here's one called Golden Brown from the band called The Stranglers. Never heard of them. But what's great is if I, if I don't want to listen to this song, I just simply hit the fast forward button and it skips that song. And it goes on to the next song in this daily mix. If I want to go back, I've got a back button up here in the upper left-hand corner. And I'm back to my home section. If I want to search for a particular artist, I've got a search section right here. And there's my search bar. I can tap on that and I can type in, there we go, Elvis Presley. I click on Elvis Presley. And it's going to bring up every single Elvis Presley song in their catalog that I have access to. It kind of gives me the top five popular art, uh, Elvis songs. And these are the top five listened to in Spotify. So the, the number one song on Spotify for Elvis Presley, which has 409 million listens, is Can't Help Falling in Love With You. If I want to play that, I simply click on it, pause it, fast forward it. And the beauty of this, because I have, I have a Spotify account, 
and I had the Spotify app, I can listen to Spotify, my music on any device I want. So if I'm, if I'm working at home on my desktop computer, I can access Spotify on my desktop computer. I've got really nice speakers that I plugged into my computer. So I've got really good sound. What's another nice feature with Spotify, and I, I should say, let me, let me back up. I'm talking about Spotify for the demo, but all these services allow me to do this. Pandora, uh, Amazon Music, Apple Music, they all allow me to get suggestions, build a profile. I can create a playlist. What's a playlist? So it says right here where it says your library. I can tap on that and it brings up playlists that I, that I personally have created. So I've just given each one of these playlists a title. So one of the playlists that I created, I called it Cover Me. And these are songs that are covers of original songs by other artists. So I've got seven hours and three minutes worth of cover songs that I've created in my old playlist. So speaking of Elvis Presley, one of, one of my, probably my favorite Elvis Presley song is Little Sister. Well, one of my other favorite artists is Dwight Yoakam. He's a country singer and he does a great version of Little Sister. Little sister, don't you? Little sister, don't you? Little sister, don't you? Kiss. Okay. So with a, with a library, you can create different playlists if you want to create a, a different playlist. Um, if I, let's say Julie and I are going on a road trip, we're going to get in the car and we're going to drive someplace for three hours. I might create a playlist for that particular road trip. So let's search for an artist. So if I tap on search and I go back up here, I've got to click this back arrow. So let me go back up to the search bar and I type in Tony Bennett, another favorite of mine. There he is, Tony. All I had to do was type in Tony and Tony Bennett came up. So I type in Tony Bennett. There are two million, there are over two and a half million monthly followers listening to Tony Bennett on Spotify. If there's a particular song, so let's say The Way You Look Tonight. If I want to add this to one of my playlists, um, I actually have a playlist called Favorites. And these little three dots right there, if I tap on those three dots, it says Add to Playlist. So I tap on add to playlist and it says, okay, which playlist do you want to add it to? So I can tap on any one of these. So right now I'll, I'll add it to this favorites right here. I tap on Juju faves. And now that song has been added to that playlist. Let me see how much time I've got here. Okay, let me get out of Spotify. I think that's, a, that's about it. But basically with Spotify or any of these streaming services, you have to be connected to the internet um, and you have access to all this music for 10 bucks a month. Uh, what I like about it is I don't, have, I don't have to listen necessarily to the radio. I don't have to listen to commercials. I don't have to listen to a DJ, whatever it might be. Um, that's just my personal personal choice. Um, another thing, which is nice, I should share with you. Let's say, and this is a perfect example. Let's say I'm going to go to the Adirondacks. So I go to the Adirondacks and I want to bring music with me to listen while I'm in the peace and quiet of my canoe. I want to listen to music. So I'm in the middle of the Adirondacks. I don't have any internet connection. I don't have any cellular signal. How can I listen to music through Spotify? What Spotify lets you do is it actually lets you download the music onto your device temporarily 
for a period of time. After that period of time, which I think might be seven days, I don't know. After, uh, you can download the music physically onto your device. So if you have an, a, a smartphone, I can store the phones on my, uh, store the songs on my phone, and then I don't need an internet connection. This just is basically a music player. So that's another nice feature about Spotify and again, most of these other services. Okay, let me get out of here. Let me get back to the presentation and we'll wrap up a few more things. Okay, so that's a Spotify demo. Let's talk a little bit about accessories, different things that you may want to purchase for your listening pleasure. Uh, kind of the traditional formats for listening are different speakers that you can plug into your devices, okay? If you have an iPhone or an iPod Touch, uh, it comes with uh, headphones. Well, it used to. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, basically, like I've got right here, I've got my earbuds. Okay, I can plug this right into my iPhone. It has my Spotify music, and I, I'm good to go. But I can also plug in speakers into my desktop computer. This happens to be the speakers that I have uh, right now that I'm plugged into right now on my desktop. Um, you know, these were, I bought them probably 10 years ago, maybe 12 years ago. This was probably $200, okay? But it's really, really good sound. I can get less expensive speakers for a hundred bucks uh, that sound great that I can take with me. Those types of speakers uh, are referred to as Bluetooth speakers. Uh, you've probably all heard the term Bluetooth, but again, you may not know what it means. Bluetooth is similar to Wi Fi in the sense that Bluetooth is wireless technology. With Bluetooth, I can connect I can connect one device to another device with no wires. That's Bluetooth technology. Connecting one device to another device without any wires. Bluetooth does not require internet connection. Wi-Fi is internet connection. Bluetooth is device to device. So basically, let's pretend this is a Bluetooth speaker. That Bluetooth speaker can connect to my iPad, to my PC laptop, to my Android phone. It doesn't matter. That's Bluetooth. It does it all wirelessly. The quality of Bluetooth speakers has increased significantly. This happens to be the Bluetooth speaker that I have that I bring with me when I do in-person teaching. Um, I bought this particular Bluetooth speaker probably eight years ago for $200, okay? I can get that same Bluetooth speaker for half that price now. So when it comes to Bluetooth uh, technology and speakers, you've got external speakers that you can do that are portable. You've got Bluetooth wireless headphones. And then these are also headphones. These are called uh, ear pods. So they're basically the same thing as this. The difference is there's no wire. So no wire to... And they also have actually a built-in microphone as well. So with, th with these devices, um, my, the headphones, I can actually um, listen to the phone too. So I can make phone calls and listen and talk to on the phone through these as well. Okay. That is where I'm going to stop for now. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you again, St. John's, for having me. Uh, before I kind of wrap up, I'm just going to give you my little ad here. If you need more information or want to talk about more stuff, you can uh, give me a call at 585-902-8450 if you've got any questions. 
or if you want any uh, personal in-home instruction, you can also email me. My email address is daniel at danielteaches.com. So I'm gonna stop there and we'll go ahead and take questions. Hopefully there'll be lots of questions to go through. There's a few in there. Okay. Already. Let's take a look. Um, so John and Shirley, uh, I have a lot of music on one of the oldest iPods. Can I transfer it to an Android phone? Um, let me think about that. Mm -hmm. I have an old iPod too. Um, I, I can't use it anymore because it actually doesn't work. But um, let me think that through. You would, you'd have to plug in your iPod into your PC. You would have to have iTunes on your, on your PC, on your laptop. You'd have to take the files off the iPhone, put them back on your iTunes, well, you, ah, that's a complicated question. And the answer is I don't, the answer is I don't know for sure. Um, I would have said yes five years ago. Now I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. Um, what does APE or APE mean? What does APE mean? I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe they meant app. Oh, app. And, and you went over that. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. App, yep. Uh, what is photo booth mean? Photo booth. Photo booth is a Apple app. It's a it's a photo app. Um, let me see if I have photo booth on my. Hold on one second. Let me just see if I've got it on my iMac here. I don't. Uh, Photo Booth is an app where it, it's kind of a funny app. You know how you step into a photo booth and get your picture taken? The concept's kind of the same. It uses the camera on your device and it distorts your face and makes funny faces. Let me see if I've got Photo Booth on my iPad. It's actually pretty it's pretty funny. I haven't used it in a really long time, but it's an app, a piece of software that manipulates your, your face and makes kind of funny faces. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I don't have it. I guess I don't have it on my iPad or my iMac here. MP, MP3, that is. Um, I'm assuming the question is, what is an MP3? Uh, an MP3 is a music file. It's the file format. It's, a, it's an audio file format. So for example, a JPEG or JPG file is a image file. There's PDFs. There's, um, if, you're, if you're using Microsoft Word and you type a letter in Microsoft Word, that fi file is a DOC file, a doc file. So an MP3 is a type of file format and an MP3 is an audio file format. An MP4 file is a video file format. Um, Paul asks, have, CD, uh, have CDs would like to get onto an iPhone for travel in car? Have PC computer with disk drive. Can they be saved to PC then transferred to phone? Again, I would say five years ago, yes. Um, hold on, I've got a screaming cat behind me. Sorry about that. Um, you got CDs. Okay, so if you have a, a traditional PC, and I say, when I say PC, I mean a non-Apple computer. 
You've got a disk drive. You can put those CDs in your disk drive and on a PC, um, the built-in software on your PC, oh, I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head, but there's, a, there's a, a, an MP3 file format that you can basically rip those CDs, the, the music off those CDs and store them on your device. You would probably need to download iTunes in order to do that. The trouble is iTunes doesn't exist anymore for PC users. It, it's, it, they're getting rid of, they basically have gotten rid of that because they're getting out of the, the business of letting you take your existing CDs, rip that music, store it on your computer, and then add it to your phone. Those, those days are fundamentally gone. Um, if you have an MP3 player, a device that specifically just plays music, then you probably still can do it. Um, so I, I can't say 100% no that you, you can't do it, and I can't say 100% yes you can do it. I would say chances are you can't. So let's just, let's just go from there. And that bums a lot of people out. Because you're like, well, I've got all this, I've spent all this money on CDs. Uh, now I got to repurchase all that music? Not anymore. So that's what's great about streaming. Okay. With streaming music, you basically don't have to repurchase music. You can just listen to music live for 10 bucks a month and listen to anything you want to listen to. So I understand kind of the pain. It seems kind of redundant. I'm the same way. Um, but I got rid of all my CDs uh, when iTunes came around. And now, and here's somebody who had all this music on CDs, converted them, put them all on my computer, and I've got, I probably got 100,000 songs on my computer, but I don't even listen to them anymore because I listen to Spotify. So it's, it seems kind of, I don't know, it's kind of weird. But the, the days of having to purchase and own music, you really don't need it anymore because of the, the, te the technology that's currently out there. So hopefully I answered that question. Any other questions that you want to type in the chat? Okay. You did such a great job. <laughs> we don't have any questions. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah, hopefully I answered all your, I already answered all your questions. I guess the, I think the takeaway here is, um, uh, like everything, the technology changes, it forces uh, new ways of, of, of buying and listening to music. Right now, the way to listen to music, uh, if you want to, kind of uninterrupted, is, is streaming. It's Spotify, it's Pandora. It's Apple Music. Uh, Apple, at one point, the company Apple was the largest seller of music in the world. Up until, again, five years ago, because streaming took over. Spotify, Spotify came up and changed the industry again. And now Apple's trying to kind of catch up with Spotify. Everyone's trying to catch up with Spotify. So it'll be interesting uh, when I give this seminar in five years, uh, or maybe even six months, how, how things have changed. But. One more question was added. Um, so, and I don't know if everyone can see it. It might just be to me. Yeah, I can't uh, see it. A WJZR, a jazz radio station in Rochester, can be heard via radio, but cannot be accessed via computer. Why? Um... Okay, so uh, Apple used to have, you used to be able to access uh, radio stations as well through Apple, but that's no longer. Um, can you repeat that question one more time? Yeah, she said um, a WJZR is a jazz radio station in Rochester that can be heard via the radio, but cannot be accessed via computer. And she was wondering why that is. Okay. So let me... Um, Kath, Catherine Canty. Yeah. Okay. W... What was it again? W what? W-J-Z-R. Okay. Yes. So let's do, a, let's do a little Google demo here. So I'm going to share my screen again. 
And this time we're gonna go, and I'm gonna open up Google Chrome. Okay, I'm just gonna go up here to Google and type in WJZR. There it is, yeah. Um, well, okay, one reason, it does not appear to have a website. Um, so that's probably the biggest reason. Uh, I'm WJZR FM 105.9. Let me just, so normally I type in WJZR, I would think, okay, I'll get to their website. I can click on their website and usually listen to their radio station because most radio stations have their own website and most radio stations allow you to click and listen to their website while you're on the computer. But it appears that they just simply don't have a website. Um, let me click on WJZR. This is just a locator. Yeah. So they just don't have a website. So that's why I can't listen to them on, online. That's it. Okay. Um, keep in mind, um, when I said you can listen to anything, you can listen to anything. So it doesn't matter what genre you like, what artists you like, they are available um, through these services. Okay. All right. So we will, uh, as we've done in the past, um, share slides and a video recording of this webinar uh, for you to follow up with if you wanted to take notes. And, uh, and we look forward to having you share your thoughts and opinions on the survey that we'll send out as well. And uh, Thank you for joining us and we hope you'll check out our next webinar series in the future. We're, we're gonna definitely bring Daniel back. So maybe sometime Good. in the fall. So lots of topics still left to discover. Yes. So uh, we'll look forward to having you join us. Um, thanks again. Bye everyone. Thanks everybody.